9-11, an event that blew our minds. It happened almost nine years ago, yet some nerds are still interested in who did it. Are you? was not an inside job, it was an Osama bin Laden job with 19 people from Saudi Arabia. Yeah, right, Bill Clinton. Bitch. The Council on Foreign Relations. Today, the CFR maintains that its goal is to increase America's understanding of the world. However, the actual objective of this highly exclusive club is revealed by the rare admissions of the insiders themselves. In the early 60s, a Georgetown University professor collects information for a book favorable to the network of powerful men who founded the CFR. For two years, Professor Carol Quigley is allowed to examine the confidential papers and secret records of this network. Quigley reveals that these men aim to create a world system of financial control in private hands, able to dominate the political system of each country and the economy of the world as a whole. In short, they seek total and quiet control of the entire world. <laughs> Have you ever wondered why there's a pyramid with an eye on it on the back of a dollar bill? Have you ever wondered why they don't teach that to you in school? What if there was a secret government that was running things? And what if they killed you on 9-11? and you didn't even notice. You know when they say the man or the establishment? It was 1956. America stood at the pinnacle of its prestige and the Rockefellers were the nation's first family not only of wealth but also of power. If there was an establishment in America in the 50s, it was these Rockefeller brothers. From their headquarters in Midtown Manhattan, their influence reached into every sphere. Over the years, through the Rockefeller philanthropic enterprises, charities, support of science, their business enterprises, a web had developed which spread out and was interconnected with practically every center of power in, in our country and, and, and abroad as well. So this was the real strength and power of the family going well beyond money alone. Sometimes they would joke about it. They say, well, David, David gets Europe, Nelson is going to have Latin America, and, uh, you know, uh, John D. III gets Asia, and then they make some joke about what Winthrop got, you know, which would be something like Arkansas. If, and I mean if, 9-11 was an inside job. Well, who would have done it? I mean, if there was a conspiracy, there must have been conspirators, right? Well, what if it was the establishment? And what if it was the Rockefellers? Well, that's an honest question. Let's listen to Aaron Russo a famous Hollywood producer who had the courage to tell the truth about 9-11. My friendship with Nick Rockefeller was one where we, were, uh, we expressed ideas to each other and thoughts and philosophies and he wanted me to become part of what they were doing and for me to become a member of the CFR. I met Rockefeller through a female attorney I knew who called me up one day and said uh, one of the Rockefellers would like to meet you. I had made a video called Mad as Hell, and uh, he'd seen the video and wanted to meet me and knew I was running for governor of Nevada. So sure, I'd love to meet him. And I met him, and I liked him, and uh, uh, he was a very, very smart man. And uh, we used to talk and share ideas and thoughts, 
And um, he's the one who told me uh, 11 months before 9-11 ever happened that there was going to be an event. He never told me what the event was going to be. But there was going to be an event. And out of that event, uh, we were going to invade Afghanistan to run uh, pipelines from the Caspian Sea. We were going to invade Iraq, you know, to take over the oil fields, establish a base in the Middle East, and make it all part of the New World Order. And we'd go after Chavez in Venezuela. And uh, sure enough, later, 9-11 happened. And I remember he was telling me how, <laughs> how you're going to see soldiers looking in caves for people in, in uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan and all these places. And, it's, and there's going to be this war on terror, uh, which is no real enemy. And the whole thing is a giant hoax, you know, but it's a way for the government to take over the American people. He told you it was going to be a hoax. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They are the they. They are they. They are the they that everyone talks about. They. The CFR building is located on the west side of fashionable Park Avenue in New York. Although it definitely is not the center of the conspiracy, and although practically none of its members are aware of an inner control, nevertheless it is semi-secret in its operation. They. It shuns publicity, and members are sworn not to disclose to the public the proceedings of its conferences and briefings. It has a formal membership of 1,400 elite personalities. They are they. They are the they that everyone talks about. I asked them, do all the people in the Council of Foreign Relations feel the same way you feel? I said, no, a lot of them think they're doing the right thing. They think that socialism is the best way to go. They think that, uh, you know, uh, that they're doing the right thing. But the people at the top, they all know the truth of what's happening. And, and that's what so, it is. So it's compartmentalized within the elite structure as well. Of course it, Of course it is. I mean, all the people that, that are in the CFR, was that two, three thousand people have to go to, like, Dan Rather? They don't know. They don't know what's going on. They just, they, they, they join the CFR because it's prestigious. They think it's good for business, it's good for this, you know, they don't know what's really happening, you know, the evil that comes out of it, that's emanating out of it, you know, and uh, to me, you know, uh, the biggest evil is what's happening right now because uh, this, what happened on 9-11 is a phony. A special televised meeting of the New York-based Council on Foreign Relations provides a window to the real story. The speaker, Vice President Dick Cheney, takes a question from David Rockefeller. Just look at the twinkle in Dick Cheney's eyes as he looks at his master, David Rockefeller. Vice President, uh, I just enjoyed so much your whole speech, but I was particularly pleased that you gave such a strong endorsement for the free trade agreement for all the Americas, subject that has been of great concern to me for many years, and particularly recently, and I think it's absolutely essential for the strength of our economy. Rockefeller's influence also extends to the current administration. He was chairman emeritus of the CFR when Vice President Dick Cheney once served as a director a relationship that Cheney concealed during his congressional career. It's good to be back at the Council on Foreign Relations. As uh, Pete mentioned, I've been a member for a long time and was actually a director for some period of time. I never mentioned that when I was campaigning for re-election back home in Wyoming. Listen, the Rockefellers owned the Twin Towers. The Twin Towers are actually nicknamed Nelson and David Rockefeller. They own all the oil companies in America, and they're a part of the Federal Reserve. They profit when our government goes into debt. They stood to gain a lot from 9-11. They own your sorry ass, bitch. Look, this whole war on terror is a fraud. It's a farce. It's very difficult to say it out loud because people are intimidated against saying it. Because if you say it, they want to make you into a nutcase. And yes, it's even possible to program people to laugh at the mere mention of the word 
conspiracy. And we look like idiots, folks, denying that the people who murdered our fellow citizens did it when they are continuing to murder people all around the world.